All right. So uh, thank you, everybody. We are recording. Um, so mm -hmm. I think our first item is um, the uh, alternate to the historic district, Alyssa Stack. Mm -hmm. Can I have a motion? So moved. This is Pam. So moved. And a second. Karen, uh, second. second. <laughs> or Christine, okay, second. Great. Uh, Excuse me. Any discussion? Hearing seems none. Seems like a good choice. All, all, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I have. Um, I, I do have discussion, and and okay. Pam might know the answer to this. It comes up sure. anytime we have an HTC um, appointee. Um, yes. I, I just like to track who's in an historic district and who isn't because I just I know it's so hard to find people to um, volunteer and especially HDC hasn't has been especially difficult but um, to just track that to make sure because it does make a difference when there are people sitting on that committee who are in historic districts subject to their own rules yep. so um, I I I, was, I, I yeah, I agree and I hear you. Um, in my recollection, based on the appointments and such that we've just recently made, is that the, um, the, the sitting members are all in a district. The alternates that we found, the, the last two, are not in a district. Okay. Because the one who was, seemed great and we moved her up from alternate to regular position, I know she wasn't in the historic system. Okay, so she's not, you're right. So, right. So now you have one on who's not, and that's who I was thinking of. Now you have one on that's not in a district. And now we just put on an alternate who's not in a district. So to okay. your point, we probably should pay attention for the next appointment to take mind that we should try and look for somebody who is in district. Yeah, this, this, is, this is Jeff. Is, is that is that a crucial like factor? I mean, it's, it's why, not why, a requirement. Why does someone have to be in a historic district? So is, they is don't that, have that to. Require? No, I, it's like the regulation doesn't say it, but the problem is, um, for it started to get off track where there was actually a whole commission of no one lived in a historic mm -hmm. district, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and. There subsequently, and this is all anecdotal, um, there were just a lot of complaints that they didn't feel like the commission could relate to the people that actually lived there. Um, so we just sort of unofficially made it a point to start to recruit for people who actually lived in district. And the state statute actually says that there should be a concerted effort. I can't remember what the language is, yeah. but they said to try to ensure that each of those districts is districts is represented. Um, I could pull the language if you want, but I remember when I first got onto the RTM, I'm in full disclosure, I'm in a historic district. <laughs> so I've gone through the process of submitting for um, basic things like just replacing windows or my fence or whatnot. And I have heard stories from my neighbors about really challenging experiences in the past. Um, and um, a lot of it them sometimes, I mean, it, it's difficult if you're getting these um, kind of very rigid rules from people mm -hmm. who don't even themselves have to abide by that, if you know what I mean. So um, it was important to me when I got onto the RTM to try to make sure that each of these historic districts are represented. And I know that when I got on Old Post Road, hadn't had a representative in a while, and we got one on. Um, Southport lost theirs, and I think was recently replaced. And I don't know if yeah. Greenfield still has one. Um, yeah, Chris Shea is up there. Okay, Chris Shea, okay. Um, yeah, and then Art Gravanis is in district. Um, George Clark is in district. Um, Rosa Negron's in district. So really, it's just the last two appointments. Um, but you know, these people do well. I, I, the Darren, who we just put on, I mean, she she had that type of background. So great background. I think it's a yeah. good point. I think it's I think it's good to be aware of it. Um, but also, you know, as Jill opened up with, it's so hard to find people to serve on things. I mean, there's just 
you know. Right, and, and then there's people who who might not be in a historic district commission, but are very cognizant, like who may have lived in a historic di- district commission Correct. at oh, some sure. point, or know, are yeah. very you know intimately familiar with everything that's going on and believe strongly about it, want to protect it. So I mean, you know, I think yeah. that's fine. We we ideally want to find someone who is representing part of the, the historic district for a his district, but certainly I would not make it a disqualifying factor if someone is capable, knowledgeable, passionate at all. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, just to have it kind of on the radar, which is why um, I think maybe they should make a notation in the application material. I, not in the application materials, but in the materials they give to us. <coughs> just annotating that, but that's my only, that's my only long comment. Okay, so I'm going to call for a vote, but first I'm going to do what I should have done before, which is say this is a, a meeting of the Legislation and, Administ- and Administration Committee of the RTM on Monday, December 7th. Uh, we started somewhere after 10 p.m. Thank you. And um, uh, so I'd like to call for a vote. All those in favor of Alyssa Sachs for the alternate to Historic District Commission, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Um, any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item is the CDBG grant uh, plan. Um, do I have a motion? I move to pass the resolution. I'll second. I'll second. Pam. Free money, that's um, good. Yeah, any, any discussion on this one? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, that sounds to be honest to me. Uh, the next item is item eight. This is the $1.484 million for environmental testing and remediation costs at various locations. So I have a motion for this one. So moved. In a second. 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 I'll, I'll second. Okay. Any discussion Pam, on thank this you. one? Pam, thank you for making that point about the waterfall. That I agree with yeah, you completely. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, I don't know if it's because of it's a new administration or what the situation is there, but that's a planning document. And for me personally, we've had – there's two sides to that waterfall. The first is some of it I would say is a giant waste of time because you can't project anything, you know, where you're doing the estimates and then we always have to go back and change it and why do we go through this exercise, right? Um, But the flip of that is at least we have something on paper, we know what our real debt is and we can anticipate additional debt and how to factor that into our planning. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's why we do it, right? So if we have this big giant elephant in the room, we know it's something. Even if we get it mm-hmm. wrong, in this particular in, in 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 this particular instance, how do you not put something mm-hmm. in there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was baffled when he. I really didn't expect him to say that they weren't planning on putting it in, or just not assigning some kind of placeholder value for the waterfall. I really didn't think that's how he's going to answer that question of mine. Yeah, I was surprised myself. And the meeting's Wednesday. Mhm. Right. Um, but it seems regarding like the actual so unnecessary. Fu- Go ahead, yeah, sorry. I mean, I was just going to say regarding the funding that's in front of us now. Um, mm-hmm. I just want to say that it's incredibly unfortunate that we're in this position. Mm-hmm. It's so upsetting, all of it. I know everybody feels the same way, but I, I can't believe we're having to put forward all this money to do this. It's just, it breaks your heart mm-hmm. that tr- what happened the first time and then to have to go and pay for it is just makes it even worse. I don't know. I don't know where to say that. this is, Pam, too, like so it's close just to horrible. the water, just so close <clears throat> to just, I know. Like, you know that was that ridiculous. was my whole thing when they were doing the berm too. I was just like, is any this is like, 
who's looking at the waterway? I, I just, I can't even. Mm-hmm. It's just, I just wanted to share that. I know everyone feels the same. It's just incredibly upsetting. And now these numbers mm-hmm. just make it worse. Yeah. And then they're leading to other things that are historical too. So it's it's a Pandora's box. Yeah, it's a never-ending nightmare. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Nike mm-hmm. site, I mean, we didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Now we have got, but now we have to pay to clean it up. Right. Yeah. Where's the grant for that? Mm. Yeah. Thanks. Um, but I think we have okay. to. I think we have to approve it because we have to pay for it. One hundred percent. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Moving on, this is related. This is the 202 for the, uh, the WPCA uh, testing, uh, hazardous material testing. Do I have a motion for this one? So moved, Pam Iacono. And a second? Se- second, Karen. Any discussion on this one? We kind of talked about it, but anything else on this one? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That's unanimous. Hey, Bill, did, did we get you on the line, Bill? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Um, Okay, we're on to number 10 here, which is the collective bargaining agreement with the uh, teachers, and a reminder that a no is an approval of the contract. Can um, I just, do I have a motion um, Bill, here? Bill, when did you join us? Were you here for all of the votes? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Jill's taking minutes. That's why she's asking. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I couldn't figure out which bridge we were, and Josh told me we're bridge number one. So, mm-hmm. um, Okay, thanks. Um, can I have a motion on the teacher's contract? I'll move. Um, I'll Karen. Move. Go ahead. Jill moved, I think. And oh, Pam. Pam, yeah, I'll move. Okay, on a second. I'll second, I'll Karen. Karen. <laughs> Someday we'll be back in a room together and we can see each other. And not. <laughs> I know. Really? Is that a thing, like being in a room? I forgot what that is. That's what I'm told. Uh, Okay. Uh, So we have, this is now moved and on the floor. Any discussion about this? I'm encouraged that we negotiated one of the lowest deals in the state. Yeah. Me too. Seems seems like a good one. You know, while while we were on the... um you know, on the call, I just did a quick calculation looking at the last um, memo that you've seen her put together for the last contract and this one and compared the base years. And for the last contract, the expectation was 8.2% um, over uh, total increase over the contract period. And it ended up being 1% lower, you know, because like, like he said, um, people leave and they get replaced, mm-hmm. you know, they retire and they get replaced by, um, by uh, cheaper, you know, people at lower steps. So, you know, just to give some context, it, 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 it is a real, it, it, it is, it, it, I think pretty consistently does create a real difference. So when we look at those total numbers, he's a, he, you know, even though it, it is good for the state, but it's also not, um, that's not a number that actually, um, that we would expect that n- number to actually come through over the three-year period. It's usually going to be something less than that. And, and over the last three years, it just happened to be a- about 1% less. So that's even better. Yeah. I'm sure that's the same in every town, but, you know, it's just some context. Mm-hmm. For anyone who... I'm ha- no, I'm sorry, yeah. Bill. No, I was going to say, for anyone who didn't quite understand what Steve was saying. You know, that it, it, it comes, it, it, I think it pretty consistently comes, 
comes out as being, you know, significantly less than, than expected. I was pleased yeah. that they finally came back and gave on medical that upset me last contract, so I'm happy to mm-hmm. see that back. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All those in favor? But so again, this is a backwards vote. So all those in favor, mm-hmm. and if you vote yes, you're voting against the contract. All those in favor? No. All those. All those opposed? <laughs> no. Yes. Yes, we vote yes, no. Yes, opposed. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And any abstentions? Okay, I think we, we were unanimously opposed, I believe. Um, okay, that brings us to uh, the Vera. Um, could I have a motion? So moved. It's Pam. Could I have a second? Second, Jeff. Okay, thank you. Um, any discussion? I'm happy the numbers are lower. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yep. And uh, I'm I'm happy the numbers are lower too. I I still understand everyone's questions. I mean, Jill's, Sharon's, and they're all good questions. They're good questions, and they should be asked, as long as they're answered. Um, but uh, I don't I don't think there's if this goes on too long, so what? I, I just I was mm-hmm. telling the whole body that because I really think like. I, I don't I don't think you should feel pressured. No one should feel pressured. And I didn't really get the sense anyone was. I mean, there's clearly some people who are really in support of this. I mean, we know who they are. Um, but you should never feel pressured. And I don't I don't think that's ever I don't, I don't think that's ever an intention of anyone. And I don't, I didn't really see that from Brenda. But um, I feel you could ask questions as as long as you're entitled to, as long as everyone's able to ask questions fairly. I mean, Jill, I had no problem with you asking 12 questions. No one else wanted to ask any. Go for it. Yeah. I think it was more so, like 50, Jeff. <laughs> what's that? I think it was more like 50. <laughs> but that was fine, Jill. You you had it the floor. You, you you get 10 minutes of the clip, and you asked your stuff. No one else and then you questions. waited. Yeah. You waited. You waited for everyone else to ask, yep. and then nobody had, and you went back. You handled it. Yep. You followed all the protocols. Yep. And, and I'm sorry yeah. you felt that way. It certainly didn't want to. We I don't think anyone wanted anyone to be pushed around. So good for you for asking those. And, and many of them were questions I had too. So um, well, that makes me. I just better. didn't want there to. I I just intervened because I thought that it was going to go down a bad path for both of you, and I didn't want that to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I understand that too, Bam. Well, I I, I think Brenda would acknowledge, would acknowledge that you know that because of the pushback, this is a lot cheaper now. I, I would hope, she, I think she does acknowledge that. So Yeah, I mean, and, she said you know, that in the beginning. Yeah, so she can't really complain about the pushback because it helped her get a better deal right. for the town, right? Mm-hmm. And That's a good point, I though. Didn't expect her to, the, the, the thing is, though, Jeff, and I think, you know, I disagree. I, I agree with Sharon. Um, uh, like I don't think she needs to present. My my personal opinion is she doesn't need to present this as a money maker or or even cost neutral. But it just has to be it had to be a lower cost because the cost was really really high before. And I, I think the way they're presenting it now is kind of bush league. And you know with with the ten year carry out of benefits, assuming that you know that old people are going to stick around until they're even older that, you know, they, what they should have done was done a reasonable, you know, as, let's just say, you know, we, we assumed people were going to retire at, at 67 or something like that. And they yeah. should have acted like they actually understood the question a little bit better, which it's, it's mm-hmm. a little concerning, you know, all this pushing and pushing and pushing and, you know, pushing in the early, you know, in the, in, in the early parts led us to a point where we actually under, you know, you know, and they, I think you know they, there was some annoyance on, on their part about mm-hmm. um, the pushing that, that that we were doing, and it led us to I don't know. It looks like mil- potentially millions of dollars of, of savings and a much better idea of the parameters. But in this particular instance, you know, with you know, it, so the deal that that they're looking at now, if everyone they think is going to take, thought was going to take it, or think is going to take it, actually does, um, is about six six point three million. And, you know, it's going to be offset 
it looks like it's going to be offset by something. And it just seems like they went a little too far by, by making it look like it's actually going to save the town money. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. me who's kind of Bush League, you know, because, you know, it's going to be offset by something, maybe half or two million, a couple million. But the way they presented it, it you know, it's just it, it, it was worthy of, of pushing on. And I think it's unbelievable. And they should have done something a little more realistic. It would have been nice to see it. It would have given a little more confidence. That, that they'd sort of learn their lesson and, and actually learn how to like <laughs> model and present things in a, in, you know, in a reasonable way, but it's still a hell of a lot better than it was before. And, you know, I, I definitely, it, it's not a huge, this thing's not going to be a huge problem. I, I, I think the funding of the, of, of the OPEB is not necessarily related to this particular, you know, deal, you know, but the fact that they're not committed to funding the OPEB, I just don't understand that. I think it's uh, it's probably unrelated that that mentality that the OPEB isn't as real a liability as the pension. I mean, it's a real liability, and and it could grow. It will grow if it's not funded, and it could grow because of co- you know the escalation of costs, and it could really put us in a really like nasty position. I think the the concept that you know. It's not a big deal because other towns aren't doing it. I mean, you know, the state probably felt the same. You know, we didn't have to fund pensions because other states aren't doing it. That's just a ridiculous way to look at it. Like, we need to be fiscally responsible and not, like, burden our children, you know, we're gonna hopefully, you know, not burden our children with, with the cost of, of this OPEB. So, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I, it worries me that, that they're not planning on doing it, but I'm not sure it's it's necessarily related to, to this particular deal. Bill, I think I, it is I, related. I, I think it is related because if they're increasing if they're increasing the liability and saying they're going to fund the increase, maybe that amount was what they were going to fund anyway. Like in other words, the, the, you can't increase the liability and and say you're not going to completely pay the ADEC and then say it's unrelated because. There's some, yeah. there's some funny amount I, they're willing to spend. I, you know what? I, I, it's Pam. Um, I, I agree with you, um, Josh, and I also agree with Bill. Um, and I think, Bill, you made really, really good points. I think you're spot on, actually. Um, regarding OPEB, the, the problem that I figured out here is that She has a different fundamental belief on OPEB than the Board of Finance has. And perhaps the RTM, I don't know, because let's face it, we've never really talked about it. The Board of Finance has always handled it, so it's never really, we've never gotten involved in it as far as I can recall in terms of whether or not we were, I don't ever remember cutting OPEB anyway. And the reason why I'm not worried about what she wants to do or doesn't want to do with OPEB is because the healthy part of the Board of Finance meeting was that they are fully funding whatever the number is. So the number is getting funded. If she chooses to only flat fund OPEB and cover her cost for VREP, The Board of Finance has flat out told her that they are going to fund whatever their percentage is that they fund at. And therefore, we all know the way that they operate based on historical knowledge, right? They're not going to be inclined to raise taxes on it. So they're going to go in and cut other things, and she is going to suffer because of it. She's going to lose some of her other programming because she didn't fund where they told her to fund. So for me, I know that it's going to be taken care of because they told her it is. And my personal opinion on the matter, and I've advised her as such, and she doesn't have to listen to me. I mean, she can make her argument for how she wants to do it, is why are you going to fight the system? Mm-hmm. But 
it, mm-hmm. she, she's yeah. the CEO. I mean, if she believes in this philosophy, then she believes in the philosophy. Uh, and that's her right. And I, you know, and so I do respect that. I mean, it's, it's her right. Personally, if I hear that the next body won't take it that way, I, I, I wouldn't want to have that argument. But that's, I'm not the right. CEO. Um, and, the, and, and so, Josh, for me, it's not a concern because I know it's getting taken care of. We can also have a situation, too, and to her point, she could fund it, right? The Board of Finance could fund it. Theoretically, we could decide, well, that's too much money in that, and we're overtaxing people, and we could cut it. Mm -hmm. So I see her argument there, too. I mean, that's not going to happen, at least. I, I don't think it is. No. You know, maybe I'm talking out of yeah. turn, but um, that, she's that's just sort losing of, the opportunity to control her budget, though. It, it's that's like, my opinion. Kind of that, yeah, I, I that that's how I look at it, Karen. But uh, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. So t- to me, it's not a factor in funding this because she said she'll commit to this. She'll make sure those numbers are there. Yeah, when I when I said it's only you know it's not necessarily linked, I meant like I, I think her philosophy is much bigger than the amount that's going to be caused by this this deal. You know, I think I think you know yeah, this deal creates some funding, you know, additional funding for the OPEB, but I think she fundamentally doesn't even really necessarily believe that OPEB needs to be funded. Like that, mm-hmm. pay as you some towns do pay as you go. Right, that's a much bigger issue than. Mm-hmm. than this this particular deal. So Yeah. I, I so think that, but yeah, you're right, Pam. Um, they're they're gonna they're gonna hold, I I have every belief that, that the Board of Finances is, is gonna is gonna fund it. And you know, she's gonna yeah, it's it's all about control and point and potentially pointing fingers, like, oh I gotta cut this because right. you know the Board of Finance is 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 going to fund OPEB as opposed and, and then losing control over where the cuts come from. I wanted to touch on your other part too, um, Bill, because you mentioned modeling and such. And I think that that was, um, I think that was a great point. And what was very um, apparent to me in, in that conversation, because obviously Sharon's well skilled at this, right? She does it for a living. Um, and, um, you know, way back a million years ago um, when I was still thin, I, I was in HR, and um, th- it, is, it is beyond my realm of comprehension of how we operate our human resources department with basically one person, the director, and a benefits person. And he has a secretary, but who, who, who has a secretary anymore? No one has a secretary anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. they, they, they need, it is so, and this is what a key part of the reorganization, um, I think, I hope. Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> yeah, we, none of us know. No, I don't know. I mean, this is, this, is, this is, no, I haven't. <laughs> but this is what I am hoping for when I'm looking at something that I understand, like the, I, this is a department I understand. It is so obvious <laughs> Number one, they need an HR generalist, and I would argue that we potentially need a compensation analyst. Um, So it it just – I don't know what they're doing, but to me, in that whole conversation and listening to to Sharon's discussion about modeling and such, and she was right, um, I'm like, this is where we need to do better because we don't have the staff to do this. Um, and that's why some of this stuff doesn't get addressed. And um, I just wanted to point that out because well, she walked through that, and I was like, and then you said the modeling, and I'm like, no, how, 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 how they, they, yeah, I can, I can see how that happened. I'm not saying it should have, shouldn't, should have happened or shouldn't have happened, but I could see how it did. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little it's a little upsetting. It's like you know, it's like a kid coming out of college, going to work in his first job, or you know, and you say, you know, what's the savings on this? And oh, just take it and carry it out ten years. You know, 
that's not something mm-hmm. you would expect, you know, at this level. But but I see what you're saying, and you know, for me, the bigger the bigger question is, you know, are those personnel files are are they going to start getting filled? Are they going to start doing the performance reviews? This is like a the promise, and I think Brenda is willing to, you know, like come back to us and 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 report on the progress. I, you know, from conversations I've had with her, and hopefully, like maybe we should all like, you know, at next before the approval, just say like, here, here are the things you said you're going to do, you know, and, and, you know, you need to commit to coming back in six months, a year and tell us how things are going because the promise, you know, for like going from having no, you know, files like Jim, Jim Hazelkamp said this is the worst he's ever seen, you know, so mm-hmm. he needs to come back in six months and tell us, you know, what he's done to make it not the worst he's ever seen anymore. Cause just hiring new people without putting that stuff in place. We were, we were pushing, you know, I, I was pushing like with other people, like to say, put that stuff in place, the re- performance review, all these procedures in place before you do this thing. Mm-hmm. And they pushed back and said, you know, we can't do that for whatever reason, but at least if we're going to do this, you know, they need to come back. Like we should probably as part of the process during this week. And, Ask for that. You know, it's just ask for a promise to like say you're going to come back and tell us where how how the how these processes are are doing like have you started doing the performance evaluation have you started putting the files together have you, you know you well, know she and has and it maybe restructured something in the town government she has restructured her own office and we still haven't gotten a review of how that's going like we I think that of- we need to make I, I I think you're right Jill and I think we we need to make a point of making that you know, of telling her that we want that on the agenda. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to make a point of following up in six months and saying that we want it or whatever time frame everyone thinks is appropriate. Well, I would assume she I can't, would I can't imagine she would not support that. You know, she exactly. wants this to go through to provide some sort of update where we are. And, and if she didn't want to do that or was afraid to do it, well, then there's something wrong with that. I mean, you know, then, then, then it would come across as smoke and mirrors. So she should be able to provide us an update, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. But, you know, there's one emergency after another in this town, so you never know, you know, it's just got to be a priority. And, and Jim Hazelcamp, you know, I, I don't know if he's ever actually done stuff. You know, he's, he, he's a big V-Rip guy, but I don't know if he's actually, you know, done the other stuff. So I'm sure if she mm-hmm. pushes him and says, you know, I promise to do this, you know, and we have – you know, six month review or whatever, then now sure will do it. And she'll make him do it. Hmm. Uh, are we ready to vote? I guess so. I am. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 I need Jill, do you know who those people were? I think it was Pam, Christine, and Jeff. Jeff. Was it Jeff? Okay. I mean, I can abstain, but I'm leaning towards towards yes. I, you know, there's some unanswered questions, but she's. I think I think it's probably going to pass. So, Bill, so are you would you like to Bill? vote in favor or? Well, abstain? you know what? I'm going to abstain because I think we need to get some commitments during the week from her on, on how to, on reporting and follow up. So I'd rather see that first, I guess. Okay. Okay. And she also uh, committed those... to like a final uh, accounting for this. So the, the actuaries are, you know, she, she did say that she would have the actuaries put together the final costs and stuff like that. Like none of this stuff's going to get done unless it's agreed to like specifically, I think. Yeah. Okay. All those opposed. Okay, and abstentions. I uh, think uh, Karen. Okay, so I, I think Josh, it was... Josh, you too? I abstained, yeah. Okay, me too. So I have for abstentions, Bill, Karen, Josh, Jill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I think that is all of our business, people. I think you're awesome. right. I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. I will second. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.